Hello and welcome to Immortal Behaviour for this week. There are many ways to win a game. Get your team home as a halfback. He won the game with his kick and go. Andrew kicks back and across. It has been a freakish kick by Andrew John. I thought he'd maybe retire, but oh, forgive me, Father, for I have said. Maybe God has come to Marathon. Welcome back to another episode of Immortal Behaviour. Joey, great to see you. Great to see, see you uh, wearing your favourite band as well. Yeah. Guns N' Roses. We were talking about the other day, Moon Freddy, when Guns N' Roses played at um, Eastern Creek yeah. in the early 90s. Yeah. So me and mates I went to school with, we had tickets, we were just so psyched to go. And then at the last minute they called me up to play reserve grade. I was like, just turned 18. Yeah. And I went into... Said to him, can I not play because I've got tickets to Guns N' Roses at Eastern Creek and it's, there's 100,000 there, my favourite band. He said, son, what do you want to be? Footy player or a rock star? Why can't you be both? <laughs> can I get back to you on that? So anyway, I missed out on Guns N' Roses, but I've seen them a few times since. Did you, um, how'd your reserve grade game go? Did you win? I don't know, I don't even remember. Don't know. No. How many times have you seen Guns N' Roses, do you think? Uh, I don't know, maybe three or four, maybe half a dozen. When we were in Auckland for the nines, mm. and I took Lewis over, my son, it would only have been eight at a time. So we're in the box at the, ni- at the nines watching, and the promoter was there. He goes, oh, you want to go to Guns N' Roses? I'm like, I don't know what. So he had, had us at the front, between, like, the front, I don't know what they call it, like the pit between the... Like where the security guards stand, yeah. yeah. In front of the security guards. Oh. So anyway, they're playing along, playing along. And i got Lewis on my shoulders anyway. I'm looking at Slash, and Slash looks down and points and throws a pick at Lewis and then points and laughs. So I look up and Lewis is giving him a double <laughs> I'm like, mate, you can't do that to Slash. Anyway, let's get talking All right, Lee, yeah, let's do talking about the footy because uh, there's Axel some Rose, reports. big Knights fan. Lots oh, nights, yeah. is he? You've got some superstar Knights fans. Yeah. yeah. Silverchair, yeah. you know, you, you bring mm. in all the big guns. Um, well, speaking of big guns, Bruce Walsh, uh, there are reports that he is about to or has agreed to uh, a huge, huge, huge deal with the Brisbane Broncos, um, set to sign a five-year, $5.5 million deal. Who do you think has won with Broncos. this deal? It's a bargain. He's a, as we all know, he's, he's a freakish player. But marketing-wise, you know, he markets himself. You know, he's, he's flamboyant. He, um, he's one of those extroverts. You know, he, he doesn't care what, how, he, how he looks. He entertains and he's very pretty. So the girls like him and the boys. Uh, I think it's a bargain. He, he had so much to that club as a player, but also marketing him. He, uh, he brings bums on seats. That's such a, for a player of his age, mm. you know, early 20s, is 20, 21? 20, yeah, he's a baby. Yeah, to be on earning mm. that much money. He should be on three times that. Really? Like if that, there was talk that we're going to have one player, I think we might do it in Super League, where you have one player who doesn't come under the cap. Mm. Your worth, marquee player. Yeah, marquee player. He, he might be worth two or three million a year. Mm. And, and the thing is with the Broncos, well, they're not really a one-team uh, city at the moment with the Dolphins, but, you know, the third-party stuff he could be getting... He, well, he signed from, mm. say, 1.5. He could be getting... Um, no, 1.1, sorry. He could be getting another million dollars on top of mm. that. Because mm. I'd imagine if someone like Nike sponsored him. Yeah. He wouldn't just be Nike Australia. I'd imagine they could market him to the world. Well, now that also too, you saw him um, with Tom Brady catching that ball from Tom Brady in the off-season. Did you see that? No. So, we'll, we'll show the vision, but um, yeah, he went to a Tom Brady event and um, got sort of, you know, they called him out mm. and Tom Brady threw a ball to him and he ran across the room and caught it. And, well, he'll yeah. be the next one putting his hand up for NFL. Yeah, well, there were, I actually asked him. I don't he, know if you people have went to that. Yeah. Bit boring, they said. Tom. Really? Not much. Yeah. Well, Reese reckons that he actually exchanged numbers with um, oh, Tom Brady. I asked him on stage about it. I said, "Can we call Tom Brady right now?" And no, he shied away. So yeah. I don't know whether the numbers were actually exchanged. Um, but for the Broncos, using so much of your cap 
on that one player, how um, how do you go about keeping all of those superstars? Because you look at it, you've got Payne Haas, you've got Ezra, you've Cobo. got Cobo. Yeah. It's a star-studded lineup. Mm. Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to be a juggling act. The big one there is Ezra, whether he, whether he can play halfback, whether he can play number seven. We had Adam Reynolds on Freddie in the eighth this week, and he said Ezra is dying to be halfback. Mm. So that's the next big one. Adam Reynolds is well, coming Ezra to the signed end. on. He signed he? on. Yeah, he's he's got a few years. Mm. It'll be a challenge. Hopefully they keep more. Hope mm. they all could stay together. Mm. Cobo, Haas, Ezra, Walsh, Pierre Cura. Hope they all stay together. You're a big believer though in if you've got a good team mm. and you've got a successful team, taking a little bit less. Yes. And being Staying happy. Together. Mm. I oh, Reese Walsh is the, just say he went on the open market, and, and I, I don't want to shit bag other clubs, but just say, like if he went on the open market, he could be getting 1.6 a year, maybe even more. But if he went to a lesser club, what price do you put on happiness and mm. winning and competing? And um, yeah, I hope he's a one club player. I'm glad he stayed up there in Broncos. Uh, Tom Dearden was the same when there was talk of him going to other clubs. Uh, I'm glad he stayed up there. Mm. He's playing a strong club, strong team. He's another one, whether he can play halfback. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing whether he can. Mm. Um, all right, well, we um, we always love to talk a bit of State of Origin mm. as well. This time of year, it feels In like March. it's getting yeah. a little bit closer. <laughs> We're a few rounds into the season. Oh, yes. Okay, right now, yep. ignore the injuries that are happening. Who would be your six and seven for New South Wales? Okay, I would go Nathan. He's going okay at the moment. <laughs> Got a bit of a future, and I'd go Cody. Mm -hmm. What, what do you like about that? Well, Cody unlocks to the left side, and last year in Game Three, Cody Walker came into the team, and the, the game plan was pretty simple: attack Munster, then go at Cherry Evans and that side of the field. Uh, Cody unlocked Tedesco. Remember, Teddy made that long break where mm. Bradman scored. Bradman scored two tries. Mm. He unlocked him. Uh, the, the kick over the top by the Fox, that was on the back of Cody. He just, he knows what plays to put on, when to get the ball, how far to go on the line. Look, he's, he's a throwback to Cliff Lines. Mm. But he's got to show, he's got to show the selector or the coach something. But he gets in there amongst players in form, forward pack going forward. I've no doubt he can shoot the lights out. Mm. Um, with Cleary struggling at the moment with that, Hamstring injury. injury. If he's not fit, who would you? Oh, I think would that Moses. change who who your six and seven are, or just you, who you? Well, seven obviously is. the other five eight is Nathan and Luai with Jerome um, at club level, uh, and then the other one's Mitchell Moses when he comes back. But I can imagine if Nathan's not there, you you go with Moses mm. at halfback. Moses and Cody, or um, yeah, I think that's ideally. The other, the other one is Jack Whiten. Mm. There's talk that Michael Maguire loves Jack Whiten. Well, because they spent time together when um, Madge was at the Raiders. At the Raiders, yeah. As and look, an Jack assistant. suits Origin footy because he's, he's tough as anything and he competes. But if I had to, I'd go Nathan and Cody. Mm. Yeah. Well, and um, Michael Maguire's also got the relationship with Cody as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. He coached him there at, at the Bunnies. Mm. Did he coach in there? Yeah, well, when did Cody? Because when they won in 2014, it was Kiri and um, Reynolds. Reynolds and yeah. the halves. Yeah, I'd say. But yeah, then, you know, yeah, he would have, yeah. Uh, but it all, it's all on Nathan's. Nathan and Moses would go well together. Uh, they'd all go well, Nathan. Mm. Yeah, but I'd go Nathan and Cody. How many, how many um, weeks would you want Nathan to be back? For or would that even with someone of his caliber not even matter? Wouldn't worry, put him straight back in. Mm. Put him straight back in. I know he's training hard. He actually trained trained at my partner's gym this morning. At oh, did he? Yeah. So uh, do some. What was he? Some yoga or? No, I think he was lifting. Yeah. I don't know if he's done some yoga, but uh, you know how he prepares and keeps himself fit. It's talked that he'll be back in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Which is so, great. Um, it's an interesting time. I see that LeBron James spends $1.5 million a year keeping his body going. Mm. It's the stage where Nathan's going to start doing that extra... Stuff outside. Stuff outside, whether it's you know acupuncture or yeah. Pilates or yoga or more 
you know, different massage or stuff like that, but he's got to be on top of his body. Can you imagine how many times Nathan has kicked a ball since he's been 15? Mm. You're mm. up in hundreds of thousands. Mm. So mm. it takes a toll on the body. Yeah. I know a lot of players, they do... Um, <coughs> Pilates outside, mm. they do their own sort of recovery yeah. places. Oh, it's important. Did you, was there much of that stuff that, would you do much stuff outside? Yeah, I used to, well, I, towards the end, uh, there was a lady I used to see in Cronulla who I've sent so many the, players the that came groin, in person. Yeah. Just, just work here. I used to drive from Newcastle to Sydney once a week to yeah. see her. And if I didn't, then the body, especially my groin, would start to break down. Yeah. Did you do any other stuff? I know you got into yoga later on in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah not really. Pilates wouldn't have been a no, thing. it wasn't a thing when I was playing. Ice baths, recovery, recovery yeah, centres. Yeah, ice baths, but they don't. They, they yeah. And surf. Surfing's enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, does the form of, uh, talking about having Cody and mm. um, uh, the blues, does the form of the bunnies worry you about bringing him in? Yeah, a little bit. But Cody's one of those players that said he's such a footy player and once you get in around form players and a pack rolling forward, I wouldn't have a problem. Mm. But he probably needs to show something. Mm. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, Parramatta Eels, they've obviously mm. been dealt that blow with Mitchell Moses out um, with that foot injury. It's a pretty nasty one. He's looking mm. to be out for a while. Um, did it surprise you to see Dylan Brown moving to mm. halfback? It did. I thought they would have unleashed... A young halfback called Ethan Sanders, who I've been watching for the last couple of years, who I think is probably the next young halfback to, to get a shot in the top grade. But um, Blaze Tuolangi, I understand he came through as a halfback, actually. And they're up against the Tigers and the young 5'8", Lachlan Galvin. They went to school together, ah. Lachlan and, and Blaze. So Lachlan was the 5'8", and Blaze was the halfback. I didn't know he played in the halves at all, Blaze. It looked really good. Well, because he made his center. debut just last week at centre, yeah, and scored a try on but debut. He, uh, he's the, he's got all the tools to be a top line five eight. Mm. Looks big and strong. I think he's about ninety kilos now, and he's a baby. So he, uh, yeah, he's going to get up there to the mid nineties. Look forward to watching him play. Mm. But a lot of responsibility on Dylan Brown, whether he can steer him around or not. What'll help him is the structures they got in place there at uh, Parramatta, but also Jermaine Hopgood. Ad lock. He's a good player. He'll help out. Mm, mm. How long do you think it will be until we get to see Ethan <coughs> Sanders? Uh, well, well, from a, a technical point of view, Dylan's a left. Dylan Brown's a left side player. He likes to step off his left foot, double left foot back, and Ethan's a left footer. So that'd be a sort of bit of a drama. I don't know whether that's the reason why Brad Arthur's um, put plays to a lung in, but. He's the next one I see in the lower grades coming through. Mm. I've watched him for a couple of years. He looks a really good player. Mm. Yeah, um, exciting to see him. Yeah, it's good to see young halves coming in because mm. uh, there's not many around. He had but if I was buying a young half, he would be the one. He'd I'd be the be one that you'd at, be, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, well, we also get to see um, a nice little family moment this week with um, Maverick uh, making his debut Dyer. for the um, Panthers. Dyer. So him and MG, they're actually, um, I was watching some stuff during the week, they've, they've spoken before about, um, you know, uh, different opportunities at different clubs but waiting because this one meant so much to, to so Maverick. Good. So another guy, um, another, you know, family son at Penrith, mm. an emotional thing. Oh, yeah, for mm. sure. Can you imagine MG? My, my guy is, is an emotional man mess when things go on. I used to see him on the field when he'd lose it and he'd get tears in his eyes. Oh, it used to be awful. I don't want to think about playing against him. He was scary. But what a moment. And MG still lives out at Penrith. So imagine the technicals. You, everyone knows MG in Penrith. Some good, some bad. <laughs> uh, so everyone, I think the whole community would just be pumped. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It's really cool. I reckon, uh, would you, for Maverick... I can imagine it'll be uh, for MG. It's going to be an emotional mm. roller coaster, yeah. anyway. You know, he'll be feeling different emotions, though. He'll be you know, so proud. Mm. For for Maverick, it'll be nerves. I think also with the extra pressure. additional stuff, the yeah. pressure. I don't know do you... Maverick. Um, they asked, was he cut from the same cloth as MG? And Freddie said no. <laughs> said a little bit. He said he's a, it's a little bit like his dad. 
But what a what a great occasion! I, I'm really looking forward to seeing him run on the field. Now, mm. So good luck, mate. Um, well, you've obviously had your you've seen your nephew's debut. Mm. What was it like watching your nephew's debut? Uh, well, yeah, it was really. It do was you remember special. the both of both of them? Yeah. Yeah. Who, I, who, I think uh, Cooper's first game was at Magic Round against Penrith. Yeah. And he, <laughs> when he ran on the field, he was defending on the right side. I looked over and went, mm, Cooper, kick out. <laughs> Good luck, Cooper. <laughs> and what about Jax? Uh, yeah, I remember Jax. Same thing. It was really good. I remember when Jack played in the World Cup for Italy. Watching him play 5 out there was really special. And... Uh, it's so good to see. Do you, you watch see it? Him? Well, you've seen him since then. Yeah. Do you so watch it? Do you watch the game so much um, differently when no, yeah. you've got a family yeah. member who's making well, their debut? Well, that night when yeah. Cooper was playing kicker, every time kicker kicker got the ball, I was like, "Oh, Cooper, you're right." Yeah, watching him uh, going into contact with Billy Army kick out. So Nerve wracking. Oh, yeah, that looks awful. What about if um, if your son Lewis? Yeah. Ever decided to follow your footsteps? Mm, I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel. Does he want to? Uh, yeah, I think so. He, 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 lo- he, he loves, it. loves his footy. Yeah. I don't think I've ever. He's always got a. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> <thinking> about... <laughs> he's always got a ball in his yeah. hand. He every time he comes to a game, he's every on the field. Every time he comes in the studio, he walks out with a brand new ball. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's He's, a, a, a new student or a, a one of the uh, rugby union ones. Yeah. Jeez, it's, but uh, all, all, all he does is before a game, if he's ever there, and he's just on the... Yeah, he's just ball, yeah. ball, ball, ball. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I don't want to think about it. Would you have to watch from home? Far out. I, 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 it's the first time I've ever really thought about it. Mm. It'd be nerve... Yeah. Beyond nerve-wracking. Mm. Yeah. Anyway... Moving on. <laughs> um, do you have a good um before we end the cha- MG. MG? Do you have a good um MG story? Well, MG was one of the rare players. I'm trying to think of it, Gordon was probably that. Where before I got the ball, before if I was going to take him on, I'd look, and if MG was in front of me, I wouldn't take him. He scared me, especially when he was at the Western Reds, when the Reds were just they were all big, really big, and I'd look up and see MG, and I'd just. Your ball. <laughs> and Gordon sometimes was like that. You look up and see Gordy and he's at his eyes and you just go, oh, yeah, yours. The raging ball. Uh, but MG, the first time I ever met MG was in the early 90s. I was playing lower grades. Um, and we, were, we went out for a beer after the game, myself and Matthew and a few of them. And we're walking to the brewery in Newcastle on the harbour there. And up ahead, about 100 metres, there was a bit of a barney, a bit of a push and shove. I look at this, and this bloke grabs a bike and goes, Whoop! throws him through a window. Oh. So we're like, what? So as we get up closer, it's, uh, <laughs> it's MG and his best mate, Spook. So Spook, him and Spook, best, besties, they used to punch on all the time. So MG threw his mate Spook through a window. <laughs> and then they're chatting away, and they're fine with it. Oh, How was Spook... <laughs> Spook's fine. <laughs> Spook is, Spook's is hilarious. I've done a few speaking gigs with MG, and when we're up on stage, so we're up on stage here. When Spook's, uh, when MG's talking, Spook just turns around like that and is watching the crowd. And if anyone talks while MG's talking, he's like, "Hey, shut up!" <laughs> Spook's the so they go guy. everywhere together. Oh, they, every time I see MG, <laughs> Spook's always there. <laughs> how so I guarantee get... tonight when they pan to MG, Spook, Spook will be, be next to him. There. How do you how do you get the name Spook? <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't. <laughs> but he is a character. He must have a hard head because he went through the window and then knocked. And up. then and then got up and had a Not few laughing, beers after. It, yeah. Oh my goodness! Um, rug, that's rugby league. For I love you. MG's story when. He went to, when he went through a bit of a tough period. He went and played for your minor, the minor mm, minors, yeah. and he was playing a game. And someone in the crowd was sledging him. So this bloke's screaming from the sideline, you know, bush footy, yeah. and there's a fence that big. MJ took the hit up, and the bloke had gone. MJ just threw the ball, ran, jumped the fence, and chased the bloke. It was like the Benny Hill show. This <laughs> bloke ran out of the out of the out of the park at, uh, at your minor and MG boots and all chasing him <laughs> I've asked him about it MG said I got out outside the the footy ground and went 
What am, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, what a character. Actually, they showed, uh, we were, were doing Freddy and the Eighth, and they showed MG during that origin when he just went absolute berserk. Nowadays, he'd get two years suspension. Yeah. Just coming out of line, just going, mm. doink. And then him and the King went at it. Him and Peter, the late great Peter Jackson. He hit Paul Hoff with an elbow. Oh, my God. Knocking blokes out, shoulder charges. He was such a character. He reckons he, just, he got the green light. He just went to He got the A-OK -okay to just go to go in. Go and go do what you got to do. And then, yeah, they threw him under the bus. But nowadays, you get two years suspension. Mm, mm. I don't know if it's on YouTube, 91 maybe, Origin. Mark Guy goes nuts. And the King, even the King, shaped up. That would have been a good fight. Um, well, we should, um, yeah, wishing Maverick all the best. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get to see a little bit of oh, the, yeah. the MG in him. Oh, yeah. well, that'd be good. <laughs> it's going to be so good to watch. MG, they'll flash to MG in the crowd and, and it'll do and be tears. It'll be and Spook, and Spook will be Spook. next to him. Yeah. Um, all right, and just lastly, um, it's been revealed that David Fafita has a clause in his contract allowing him to terminate his deal with the Titans by round 10. What do you think about that? Is this the first time anything like that has been in, a, in someone's contract? Wow. So there must be some, there must be some clauses in that I can't in that clause I can't that. it uh it's a crazy clause mm. well wow. do you think anyone else any other clubs would be interested in picking him up yeah, for sure he's such a damage i think canberra went in big a couple of years ago didn't they one 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 million mm. has anyone well, you got get that? the best out of david you know he's he's a bit of an enigma mm. but you know the, the, i'm trying to think over the you know the, a plot guy that big and fast and powerful. I, I'm trying to think any player in history who has those tools. You probably think Gordon Tallis, Gordon at his best could you know, score what, 70, 80 metre tries. Mm. But David's bigger than Gordon. He'd have 10 kilos on mm. Gordon. But we haven't seen it consistently. The big challenge for David is to do it week in, week out. But. Uh, at his best, his damaging best, he's worth a million a year, for do, sure. Do you think the Titans would be worried about losing him considering their poor start to mm, this season? Yeah, maybe. Mm. Maybe they'd be thinking, especially with what's happened to Tina. Um, yeah, we'll see. What do you think about pl paying uh, players at that position that much money? Do you think it... Well, it's a gamble. Mm. It's a gamble, for sure. Uh, I don't know how they stack it up with... But usually you your money goes into your fullback halves, or one of the halves, and your dummy half. Uh, probably the most successful club over the years with salary cap, the way they manage it is the Storm. And probably the most any of their back rowers on, probably Ryan Hoffman back in the day, mm. maybe. He might be on five or six hundred. Mm. Trying to think what team would need an explosive back, because the Tigers have got really good forwards. Bulldogs have got Kikau and Preston. I think it's the Raiders. Mm. The Raiders are going big for it. Mm. Um, well, we have finished the last um, few weeks on any any tips. So you've mm. given some travel tips. Do you have any Easter Easter tips? Uh, long well, weekend. Not much of maybe a some long weekend tips. Yeah. If you're going to give the kids the chocolate, maybe before midday. Yeah. Because it sends them a bit burker. Um, <sighs> Freddie and the Eighth. We we. we Myself and Freddie, we didn't know what happened on Easter. I'm sorry to all the nuns that, in uh, St. Patrick's at Cessnock where I went to uh, the primary school. Did you know, forget? Yeah. yeah. I forgot that, mm. yeah, what happened. Were yeah. you a good, good um, scholar in religion at school? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> We I wasn't an altar boy. <laughs> we found out um, years years after my grandmother died that she was actually a nun for a little bit. Really? Mm, yeah. And then she left the nunnery and then met my grandfather and wow, had a family. Yeah. Wow. So that's the, the something about a nun's <laughs> outfit. <laughs> that's, that's my I grandmother. Like all the nuns out there. Not your grandmother. <laughs> Is it Sister Act, that movie? Sister Act, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, Goldberg. Right. Woofy. <laughs> Woofy. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, there you go. Some advice. Give the kids chocolate before Good midday. Good yeah. And watch out for those. <laughs> <ones>. <laughs> All right, enjoy the footy. We'll see you next week. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Ain. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.